what is the most desperate scam a customer has tried to pull on you? Story 1. Years ago, I worked at a Walmart and this guy came in trying to return his Wii, which didn't work. I just bought this for my kids last week and it's already broken, but they won't take it back because I lost my receipt. The Wii in question was the most beat up and disgusting looking GameCube I have ever seen, like he found it in a landfill or something. I should also point out that I wasn't working the return desk or even as a cashier. I was stalking the food department. Turns out he was trying to talk every employee in the store into either giving him a refund or a Wii. Similar to this, we had people steal demo devices from Apple and try to sell them to us. After testing, we'd refuse to buy it, but they'd then claim that we broke the device during the test, so we'd have to buy it. Demo devices have odd serial numbers and look slightly different, so it's obvious these guys were scammers. We've also got CCTV, so this would never hold up with the police even for real devices. They then try different members of staff, go to different stores, and try the same thing. They never seem to catch on that phones exist and stores keep in contact with one another to save time with these idiots. Because I've worked at Walmart, I say screw warranties. I just go buy the broken item again, put the broken one in the new box as exactly as the new one came in as I can, and then say I got a double by mistake. Wife already bought one, I just got one for my birthday, and they got me one by surprise. While the statement is true that most customers are dumb when it comes to trying to scam, it's actually the employees who act dumb, not because they are dumb, they just don't get paid enough to give a crap. Let's be real about it. Yes, it's more than minimum wage, but I don't get paid enough to really give a crap why you think you deserve a refund for the fact that the box is bent in the corner, Sharon, and I am the manager. Story 2 Worked in a bottle shop. One afternoon, a shady character entered and spent 10 minutes browsing the liquor section. I stayed at the checkout and watched him on CCTV. He ended up shoving two bottles of Johnny Walker Blue down his pants and walked out. Store policy is not to confront shoplifters. That's what insurance is for. I called the police and put the footage onto a DVD for them to collect. About an hour later, the same guy returns with the bottles demanding a cash refund because he'd purchased the wrong type. Just as I was telling him I can't do a refund without a receipt, the police walked in to collect the footage. He left with them in handcuffs. Same type of thing happened to us. As I was walking in for my shift, there was a car stopped right in front of the doors. The next thing I knew, I was walking up on a guy carrying out about 10 pairs of shoes out of their boxes as he was running out of the store at full speed and basically Superman jumped into the car. They sped off and the APAs were all kind of staring at each other going, WTF just happened. Later on that night, the dude came back wearing a pair of the shoes that he stole and his hoodie still had one of our security tags on it. So he set off the alarm when he walked in. They followed him around for a bit. Eventually, he made a run for the door and an APA grabbed the hoodie on his way out. The hoodie came off and the dude kept running into the parking lot. We were almost at closing time anyways, so they locked the doors behind him. Then this madman came back to beat on our glass doors to demand his hoodie back. He'd also inadvertently lost one shoe, and he needed that back as well. We obviously refused, and he called the cops. They were very amused with the situation when they got there. I don't think he went to jail, though. Years ago, I worked at Kmart while I was in college. My boss went to lunch and asked me to fill a display with Polaroid Instamatic film. So I did. She came back from lunch and was angry that I didn't do what she asked me to do. I told her that I had, and she led me to the display, which was completely empty. She didn't believe me, so I I showed her the empty boxes. She called security who found a man in the shoe department filling Kmart bags with packs of film. When he saw the security guy, he just walked out the door. Back in those days, the instant film was stupidly expensive, and he was stealing nearly two cases. Story 3 Years ago, I worked at a small hardware store, where they were constantly getting huge rolls of copper wire stolen. One day, this guy and his girlfriend come in to return a roll. I was a few months in on the return counters. They had no receipt, and when I scanned the item for the return, it was only doing the price per foot. I couldn't figure out how to get the SKU or the price for the whole roll. Called the manager, and he came out and right away knew there was no way these people bought a roll and returned it. So he asked when they bought it, and they say two weeks ago, which is the common response. And my manager tells them, oh, really? Because the last time we sold an entire 
entire role was over three months ago. The guy starts to get brave and tells him, oh, so you're saying I stole it? And my manager says yes. They end up leaving and leaving the role behind. Before they leave the store, the guy says, I'm coming back and bringing the cops. The manager says, go ahead. That way you can explain to them how you stole the role. When we knew that someone was returning a stolen item, we would simply tell them that it was now reduced in price to $1 and they could take it or leave it. Since we were a chain, we couldn't actually accuse them of stealing it without getting into trouble. We also would use a blank key on the register keyboard that would throw an error up on the screen when we scanned an item, and we would simply tell them that the item is no longer in our system, but we could offer them a refund of $1. Some were so desperate or stupid that they would actually accept it, even on items that were worth $10 or more. Also, way back in the day, in the early 90s, we would get people trying to write bad checks all the time. So one day, this guy came in right around the time when DVD players were coming down in price and he decided to write a check for one. I think they retailed for around $200. He was so happy that his bad slash forged check cleared our manager's approval. This was before Telecheck even existed. You decided if you wanted to accept a person's check by calling the bank or just by looking at it. That after he took the DVD player out to his car, he came back in to purchase three more because he wanted one for every one of the TVs at his mansion. He starts to write a check for the next purchase. We decide to call mall security, which back then happened to be two off-duty plainclothed LAPD detectives that the mall employed. Yeah, it was beautiful to have two actual cops there in two minutes when needed. Long story short, I can still remember the look on his face when the two plainclothes detectives showed up and flashed their badges at him and wanted to make sure his checks were valid. He ended up being busted for fraud of a merchant, false identification, and grand theft. The same thing happened to me. I worked in a kind of pricey barbecue restaurant. One night, we had a couple come in when we had a new manager on duty, and the couple said they bought food that day, and it wasn't good and wanted a refund. I knew something was fishy, but the manager panicked and refunded them under someone else's ticket. He was later fired for a different reason. About two weeks later, the same couple came in again with our main manager on duty, and I instantly recognized them and told him not to believe a word they said. They tried the same scam, and when my manager didn't fall for it, the husband realized he was caught and said, let's just go, while the wife wanted to say, we're never coming here again. You're gonna get a bad review. Pretty sure they had a drug habit they couldn't keep up with. This was all over $30. Story 4. We don't deliver the pizzas we make. It's carryout only. Had a customer call and had a long slash angry conversation with me because I wouldn't deliver to her. She proceeded to say, a couple of times, you must be new here, I know the owner personally, to which I responded, well I'm the owner's daughter, and we don't deliver. My favorite is when they try to combine the I know the owner with some very obviously fabricated story about how they were present on the day we opened, but are wildly wrong about literally every detail they try to come up with to prove themselves. I just don't get the point of it. Why lie like that over something so stupid? Especially when there's such a high risk that you could be talking to someone who has actually worked there since the place opened, or the owner's daughter in your case. I worked at a supermarket, and at certain times of the day, we do discounts on products that are going to expire soon. For example, in the morning, they'll be discounted by 20%, and by afternoon, 50%. I was stocking shelves one evening, and a man brought something to me that was expiring the next day, and had only been discounted by 20%. I put it up to 50% and say, thanks for letting me know. Have a good night. Less than five minutes later, he's back with a whole handful of new products, asking me to discount them by 50% also. I try to explain that we only discount products that are approaching their expiry date. He argues and says I just did one, so I should be able to do all of them. Usually when customers try to talk me into doing extra discounts for them, I explain that it's policy blah blah blah, they check it, and I can get in trouble and lose my job. Not untrue. He then tells me he has a friend named Kate, changed for the story, who works there too and she does special discounts for him all the time. I know this is untrue, but I tell him again that I'm not risking my job to give him more discounts, and he eventually drops in and leaves. People try this all the time. This other person who works here has done that for me before. Cool, well I'm not that person and I know I'm not allowed to do it. It bugs me a lot because they think they can manipulate poor minimum wage staff into doing whatever they want. I got a lot of customers who pull the, the customer is always right crap on me too. Story 5. 
Sold a guy a phone years ago when I worked for a wireless carrier. Spent an hour getting all his information transferred and setting up his new phone. He comes in the next day with a shattered screen. Apparently, he didn't remember that I was the rep who helped him and proceeded to tell me that was how it looked when he left the store. Needless to say, the phone was not replaced. I had an old woman try to return her smashed phone the day after she got it. She had dropped it getting out of her car. I told her we couldn't return the damaged product, and she got all pissy, saying the screen must have been faulty because she barely dropped it told her no still. She then brought up that the screen wasn't all that responsive anyway, and I was like, yeah, it's broken. She asked if the unresponsiveness could have been unrelated to the broken screen. I said technically, but it's still broken and that I wouldn't return it. Said she'd never shop there again. Fine. Had a similar run-in with a lady who upgraded her phone and her three kids' phones to iPhone 7 when they came out. She was very certain that she didn't want any add-ons, cases, screen protectors, extended warranty, which is fine, but she was back the next day. Her screen had cracked, and she wanted to return all of them. I said she could return the other three, but not her cracked one. She flew into a rage about how can you sell something so fragile. You sold me a defective one. Your customer service is so terrible. She ended up keeping all of them after my manager explained the situation to her. She wasn't really trying to scam anyone. She's just entitled. Story 6 a guy comes in to fill his son's Adderall script. The guy is super twitchy and the son is chill as could be. For all controls, we are supposed to run a report that shows everywhere in the state they have filled any. Of course, the report is a mess. Multiple pharmacies, multiple scripts, multiple doctors, all the red flags. To top it off, an Adderall script within that week had been filled, so we really couldn't fill this one. The dad comes back and tells him that we can't fill it. And dad starts going on about how his wife must have filled it, but they need some for today, blah blah blah. We decline, and his last words to use are, My son needs them for a birthday party he has to go to today. Can't you help? No dude, we can't help. You're clearly taking your son's pills. Please get help, and stop using your son to get high on prescription drugs. My mom works in a pharmacy, and she sees a lot of people like this. Recently, she had a woman come by who had a lot of scabs and places on her body, asking for a large amount of needles because her boss's company needed them. A little insight, my my mom works at a Sam's Club pharmacy, so the lady thought they could get bulk needles. But my mom said they couldn't give her that many. The most they could give her was a smaller amount. So she goes on and the lady leaves. Well, later that day, her boss calls the pharmacy. He calls saying he is the boss of this organization and they ran out of needles and needed them for their customers. Well, common sense, if it's a business or organization, a needle company would deliver to them personally and they wouldn't have to buy them at Sam's Club. So my mom explains what she did to the girl along with my mom's boss explaining it to him as well. Then he finally gave up and said he'd just get them somewhere else. In a semi but kind of not really related story, I had my daughter via C-section almost two years ago now. Only one of three scripts was signed and it was literally the one I had no use or need for. Iron pills? Already had some. Doc on call screwed up my last name when he wrote the script and then didn't fill enough out or something when he rewrote it again. Somehow I managed to get through to him directly. He started chewing me out about how shady this was and yada yada. I hadn't slept in two days and was dealing with my two-year-old and my five-day-old infant. My now ex was running back and forth between our place, the hospital, and the pharmacy. He even left the screwed up copies with the nurse at the hospital to be destroyed. We told the doctor that. I started crying on the phone because I felt bad for bothering anyone at all. I hate having to take even Tylenol. He just got really quiet and apologized for being rude. He was up all night doing an emergency procedure and had not slept yet and had already driven back to the hospital twice. I cried harder when I heard that. I don't like inconveniencing people. He said he'd be at the hospital in X minutes and to have my now ex meet him there. He waited that final time to ensure all the information was correct this time and I finally got to get about 45 minutes of sleep that night between the two kids having opposing sleep schedules at first. Story 7 a customer brought back a jumpsuit for a refund because it had poop in it. Apparently, it had been like that when she bought it. It stank so bad that you could smell it through the taped up plastic bags that she had put it in. The levels of how impossible that would have been to be unnoticed by changing room staff to then be put on the shop floor 
to then be picked up by the customer to being bought via a cashier still unnoticed. The worst part is some idiot on the refunds counter downstairs actually accepted it and put it on top of the trolley full of other returned items for us to put back upstairs, complete with a note stapled to it that said warning feces inside. One of the biggest WTF moments I've had in any job that I've worked. I worked 12 years in retail before I switched occupations. One retail store I worked at used to have a return it for whatever reason policy, and you didn't have to have a freaking receipt. A couple tried to return a pot and pan set because the Teflon was coming off. Brand new cookware with the Teflon already coming off after only one single use. How odd. I have to see this. Yeah, about that. There was badly burnt food in the bottom of the pans, and someone had used something sharp to try and scrape it out, hence the Teflon peeling. The store took it back. Another customer brought back swim trunks because they were the wrong size or whatever. The return desk accepted them and refunded the customer. The person working in clothing that day went to examine them to ensure they were okay to put back out. Yeah, I totally feel your pain because these swim trunks were immediately sent to rubbish and written off because of pretty much the same reason that jumpsuit was. I worked retail several years ago. While in college, the store I worked for had the same policy. We even took back things we didn't even sell. I worked in apparel, which included jewelry and some housewares like towels. Our manager would make us find a comparable item and use that UPC to give the refund. It was ridiculous. I remember arguing with a guy who wanted to return a watch. He swore he bought it at our store. I kept explaining that it was impossible. I called the manager who said, just refund it with a watch that matches the price he says he paid for it. But the worst was how many times we took back obviously worn, dirty clothing like lingerie. Story 8. I used to work at Best Buy. This guy came in and returned a laptop, saying that the box had some old laptop in it. He was yelling and screaming that we didn't know how to do business. The manager gave him a full refund. We started to check that old laptop he brought in. It won't turn on. Looks like the motherboard was toast. We pulled the hard drive out and started checking the data. The hard drive was completely fine with everything on it. We started looking for the clues and found the pictures of the guy who returned the laptop. It was his old machine. We had all his info. The manager called him and said he had 15 minutes to bring the new laptop back or he was calling the police. That guy came in and dropped the laptop at the front desk. Never saw him again in the store. My boyfriend once bought a new smartphone. He couldn't start it the right way because some Bjorn had already logged into it. It was new. It was in its original box. The only difference to smartphones is the normal way. It already had this Panzerglass on its screen. Some of these phones were sold pre-prepared with that, so we assume some dumb twat started that phone without permission and logged in. My BF got a new phone, without Panzerglass. I worked at Circuit City, and I actually had the opposite of that happen. I had a guy come in to return a subwoofer that wouldn't work. I knew the kid from high school, and from what I had seen slash heard, he was a pretty good guy. Customer service asks us car audio installers to come up and check returned products. My boss comes up to the counter and opens the box, and it's an obviously blown subwoofer that is an older model than what we were selling at the time. The boss basically tells the kid to leave before he calls security. The kid gets irate and swears up and down that this is the sub we sold him. At this point, I was kind of disappointed, because I thought he was much smarter and more decent than this. Security gets called and he is escorted out. Cut to three days later, we sell another of the same subwoofer. This customer pays for installation. I get the sub from the back and open it. Uh-oh, another old blown sub. Check two more, same deal. Call our supplier, apparently the manufacturer had accidentally shipped out a handful of subs that had been sent in for refurbishment. I don't know if the management ever tried to contact the kid to make things right. Jerry, if you're out there, Circuit City did you wrong. I worked at BBY and had a guy come in with an Xbox to return with all of its components, and then some extras like a headset and cords in a trash bag. We began to pull it out, and the power cord, HDMI, and headset cord, all of them had been cut in half. Of course, he claimed it was new and that he didn't have the receipt. However, the machine was clearly used for a while, aside from the physical damage, and I imagine the extra components were stored with it, but he didn't know what originally came with the Xbox, so they threw it all in a bag. 
Of course, we couldn't find the original purchase. At first, he played dumb about the cords being cut, and we sent him away. He came back the next day and told us he bought it like that, and that's why he's returning it. Yeah, okay bud. I'm glad I was there both days and was able to tell him exactly how unlikely his story was and that we'd never give him a refund or exchange for this machine, so stop trying. Story 9 I'd like to return this unopened pack of cigarettes I purchased earlier today at your establishment. Might be paraphrasing a little bit. I open the store every day and hadn't seen this dude once that day. Looking at his cigarettes, it's a brand we don't carry. Asked him for a receipt to confirm he purchased them there, but he obviously didn't have one. That's fine. If you can just tell me what time you were in here today, I can look it up on our cameras to confirm your purchase. My god, the backpedaling and stuttering. I grabbed his cigarette pack and fake examined them. Wait a moment, sir. Are you sure you purchased these at this store? I don't think we carry this brand. He took the cigarettes back, came up with something about his brother must have yada yada, and then he walked out. A tobacco store in town sells some of the brands we carry at a much cheaper price, so people like to try and do returns at our store to make a quick buck. We generally don't take any returns on tobacco, but this guy didn't even scope out his mark. Thanks for reminding me. Had a customer come and buy stuff, one of which was a pack of smokes. I finish helping him and wait while he gathers his stuff. Suddenly he asks me where his cigarettes are, and I don't know. So I search for them. As we're searching, he picks up an unopened pack from his pocket, sees I noticed, puts it quickly back, and says he bought this pack earlier, and becomes adamant that I should just get a new pack for him. But I don't. I've had this happen with multiple things. One time, this really drugged out lady came in and wanted to prepay gas. I ring her up and take her $10 bill, but for some reason she stops me and decides she doesn't want anything after all. So I hand her her cash back, see her put it in her bra, and then she walks back out. 20 minutes later, she comes in and asks me why her gas pump isn't pumping, and that she just wants her money back so she can go. I told her straight up I gave her all her cash back already, and I've got cameras to confirm it. She got really pissed, said I was wrong, and then left. Weird people out there. Story 10. At my old job, they used to have sales pretty often and would also give out coupons for specific dates. For Boxing Day, they had a 30% off sale, and we'd also given out coupons that would start the next day. Lady came in on Boxing Day, and we worked out that she'd got more of a deal if she used the coupon instead. So I offered to hold her items for her. I explicitly told her that she wouldn't be able to get the 30% off and that she decided to use the coupon instead. She comes back the next day, goes to purchase her items, and gets angry because they wouldn't give her both the 30% off and let her use the coupon. She told the cashier that the person she'd spoken to the day before had told her she could do that, saw me, and said it was that girl who told me. I went to cash to speak to her. I was a key holder at the time and her story changed about three times throughout the whole thing. First, she said that I told her she could combine the discounts. Then she said that I never told her she couldn't combine the discounts. And then finally it was, well I don't understand why I'm not able to do this. Another manager came over to help sort it out and as I walked away I heard her saying that I was a liar. Now I work at Sephora and we always get people trying to return fake products. My favorite one was when someone returned a face mask but had put a can of tuna in the box instead of the actual face mask. I worked at Ulta and someone tried to return the big liter bottles of shampoo and conditioner but they had filled them with water and froze them. The temperature and condensation were a dead giveaway, so we refused to return their items. They proceeded to call corporate to complain and got a $100 gift certificate and then we got bitched at. I once bought an Urban Decay Smoky Palette as a gift for my girlfriend at the time. Shortly after it came out, I found it much cheaper on eBay so that's where I bought it. When it came in, it looked off, like the box was put together by a 12 year old. It just wasn't right, and one of the parts was broken, so we took it to Sephora and they exchanged it for a new one for her. Looking back, I'm pretty sure I got a counterfeit makeup kit. Didn't know those existed. Nice people at Sephora though, just give us a real one. I'm sure they knew it was fake. Story 11. I work at a movie theater. We have a $5 discount day. A customer comes over and starts telling me how she was there the prior day and that we had given them the wrong soda and her diabetic husband had drunk it and suddenly had to go to the hospital to get medication to cure him. Several things wrong with that story. One, 
That's not how diabetes works. You don't die from a sip of soda, and generally, if you did, you'd have insulin to take. Two, the employee she had complained to in order to call me over had been the only concessionist the prior day, and somehow she failed to identify him when I asked her who it was. I asked her for ticket stubs or proof of purchase, and she came up with nothing. I went to the attendance for the prior day and pulled the report for the movie they claimed to have seen. To my delight, the showtime they claimed to have seen had zero tickets sold to it. I printed the report and went back to meet them. Yeah, sorry, looks like there were zero tickets sold to that showtime, and I showed her the report. She then tried to say we sold her tickets to the wrong movie. I told her that was impossible because then she would have been in the wrong auditorium. She had no response to that. Then she spluttered that she guessed she would just go buy tickets. And I said, yeah, I guess so. She left. Movie theater workers here as well. This same situation happened to me too. We received a call yesterday from a guest who had to leave because of a group of guys yelling and hurling insults at her and her friends, throwing popcorn and kicking her seats. She claimed that she just left, didn't want to cause a scene, and wasn't going to speak to a manager. Well, since this has happened to me in the past with scammers, I ask the basic question, do you have your tickets? And I'll just give you a pass. Of course, she paid only in cash, didn't have anything else that showed she was there. She didn't know where she was sitting and got her movie showtime wrong twice. My BS detector went into overdrive, but I wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt and still tried to figure out anything that proved she was here. When she just kept on insisting it wasn't about the money and that a few free tickets and call it even, I had enough. I told her that since she didn't have her tickets and the fact that she didn't talk to anyone after the movie there wasn't much I could do. Sorry. The kicker was we have brand new recliners and when she kept insisting they were kicking her seats, I told her that wasn't possible since there was about a two foot gap between the back of the seat and a fully reclined chair. She got flustered and just said she couldn't possibly explain how they did it, to just trust her. Not likely. I get this call literally all the time. Same situation and everything. I got something similar last week. Claims her baby fell and hit its head, and the babysitter called and they had to leave. Then, when I asked her for proof of purchase, she claimed she lost her wallet. I've been in the industry so long that I don't even bother trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. If they have no proof of purchase, I tell them to piss off, politely, and then star 69 the phone number. I also pretend to be concerned in the beginning to get their fake names and write them down, usually after I start texting out to my other theater friends to let them know the scammers are at it again. Story 12 I was working in a betting shop during the 2014 Football World Cup. We had this one really awful customer who must have been in his 80s, and always wildly inappropriate, asking what color my underwear was, did I need someone to keep me warm tonight, etc. But I couldn't do anything as the higher-ups wanted to squeeze money from him. Anyway, the night before the final match, he comes in and tells me he wants to bet on Germany to win. I spent about 10 minutes explaining to him that as it was the final, he could no longer have a broad bet like that. Instead, he'd have to choose between a 90-minute win or or winning in extra time on penalties, etc. I showed him the odds for all of the different bets, and he ended up choosing the 90-minute win. I put the bet through for him, and off he went into the night to be creepy somewhere else. The match plays out, and of course, Germany wins in extra time. The next day, unnamed creepy dude comes in grinning from ear to ear and telling me how he's a winner. Oh boy. Again, I have to explain to him that his bet isn't valid, as he predicted they'd win before 90 minutes. And they hadn't. The dude flies into a rage about how I'm a money-grabbing slut who's jealous of his riches and I have to pay him out or he'll call the police. I tell him to leave my store or I'll call them myself, and he complies. A few days later, I come back from my lunch break to see him ranting at my cashier. I ask what the problem is and he throws me his bet slip for the World Cup, only now he's written extra time on it in pen and is trying to get my less experienced staff member to pay him out. I tell him that when we scan bets, the computer takes an image of it. Obviously, the slip he has given to us has been altered, as it doesn't match what's on the screen. I even turned the computer to show him, and that counts as fraud. Again, he leaves, spouting nonsense about how women shouldn't be working anyway because they can't count or read. The next week, I get told I have to go to a meeting as I've had a complaint filed against me by a customer. The day of the meeting rolls around, and I'm greeted by my area manager, security director, and creepy dude. 
he had phoned the customer line and said I'd refused to pay his bet and taken the money for myself. We ended up bringing up the CCTV of the night he originally placed the bet, complete with audio, to prove without a shadow of a doubt that he was in the wrong. The dude won't accept this and starts screaming that we're all thieves. We faked the audio and threatens to get a lawyer. Security director escorts him off the premises and he is banned from all of our chains indefinitely. The kicker is, if his bet had won it, it would have been a whopping 55 pounds. Thanks for watching until the end. If you have a similar story to these that you would like to share with us, please leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and don't forget to subscribe. For more videos like this one right now, please stop by our channel. Thanks again and see you next time.